Welcome to the final episode of the housing crisis. Uh, I am Hank Kahn, and once again, I'm, and last again, I'm here with Corey Chambers. Uh, Corey Chambers is a uh, mortgage, or sorry, a real estate broker in California. Thank you for coming on the, the show tonight, Corey. Thank you. Corey is a libertarian, and I am a life, I pretty much have voted for since the early 1990s with the Green Party. Um, as a libertarian, do you vote for people who are uh, libertarian, or do you vote for other people as well? Uh, usually libertarian, because that way you know you're not voting for the lesser of two evils or any other evil. You're voting for the people of principle. Uh, which is namely liberty, uh, freedom, and prosperity. Mm -hmm. uh, as a, as these political ethos um, are powered, um, really the true power in America is money. There is only one capital. It fuels all, and that is money. It's not oil. Oil is nothing without money. So let's talk about money. Uh, the Libertarians, uh, as a political party, do accept uh, ca campaign funds from corporations. It's they're legally allowed to, and they do so. Uh, how do you what, what What is your view on collecting campaign funds for corporations? I don't know that much of the details of uh, collecting campaign funds from corporations. I know that the uh, Supreme Court some number of years ago said that. Uh, you really can't limit uh, corporations. They have the right to speak. It's just like a freedom of speech thing. And um, they are allowed to give money uh, to support what they believe in. And uh, so uh, that's all I know about campaign financing. So when you look at the quality of people approaching a proverbial table, of negotiations and you have and you as a, a real estate broker your broker you're overseeing a deal and you have a corporation who has interest in buying a house and you have whether or not be an llc of or a uh something else a, a more blatant form of a company versus somebody who's just uh buying their first home uh what are the factors of what are they going to be the outcomes of that of, of that or of that kind of competition to buy a house oh i'm not sure exactly what you mean you mean uh, uh, the com a, a corporation competing with individuals and families in buying homes yes uh-huh um well i mean corporations are people uh, i know california and probably every other state uh, the corporation has to be comprised of people. So it's people who are buying it to do their little gig, to do what they're doing, so they could offer you know, products and services to, to help other people. So corporations are people helping people. And um, so they're, um, and you know what? Uh, from what I've seen, um, individuals and families, first time home buyers, have uh, an advantage in buying properties because they can do uh, FHA, VA uh, with only three and a half percent down. So corporations can't, I don't think they could usually do that three and a half. They certainly cannot do it with FHA, VA. That's for uh, individuals and families. So um, from what I've seen, uh, unlike the stock market, I mean, the stock market is really rigged for the big companies. Uh, from what I've seen, single-family homes are rigged for um, the or the regular family. Rigged for the regular family, which is what we want. Uh, however, so you don't think that a company wanting it will automatically just out uh, bid a uh, single family, and will um, there'll be no competition, and they'll buy that. And a company won't move. Now, a company may be a person, but that company is not moving into that house. They're going to rent it out to the local community and will probably raise the rent. 
Um, is that something that is a fantasy or is that the reality of life? I think that over the last, in the last few years in particular, more corporations have been buying a higher percentage of properties. And I think that's because I don't know, I haven't analyzed that completely, but I, my guess is it's because the federal government's been um, taking more for itself and the federal government's been giving more to corporations in the past few years and has been stepping on individual rights and liberties of uh, so so you think when you think that possibly uh corporations is, are getting the blame of what actually governments are doing yeah governments and corporations are tend to be in bed together and they're the uh, corporations are allowed to in many ways bribe the government especially we know like the drug companies, big pharma, are allowed to fully bribe the federal government for um, for getting medications approved, prescription medications approved, um, like which almost no other country on earth is allowed to bribe the government by corporations like that. So, but I think it also carries over to a certain extent with other industries. Um, they're allowed to not as blatantly as the pharmaceutical companies. Uh, but that's why most Americans are now drug addicts. If they're not doing illegal drugs, they're doing they're addicted to legal drugs that they don't usually need. Uh, they don't need like 50 or 60 percent of them that, that they're taking. So um, but when we get into real estate, it's no doubt getting more and more corrupted by corporations that are allowed to, you know, increasingly bribe the government. From what I've seen, real estate is actually less, slightly less corrupted than other industries. Banking is much more corrupt. Lenders, lenders were more corrupt. They've, they've become less corrupt, but now they're, now basically the government controls the majority of home loans and so, so forth. And almost every detail is controlled by the federal government now. So everything is at some level corrupt. Many, much of much of what's out there you see at is at some level corrupt, whether or not in a small way or a wholeness way. Well, yes, I mean power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So. The more power there is, the more money there is getting concentrated in the government and, and corporations, then the more corruption you're going to have, certainly. Is the state of corruption is something that you have accepted and, and you are maybe, uh, not only do you accept that the, these, the uh, capitalism and, our, and also uh, our government are, are, have been corrupted to the point or we just accept it and live with it? No, I accept the fact that um, capitalism and free enterprise are less corrupt than communism because with the capitalism and free enterprise, at least people are allowed to legally make their own decisions and they usually have more than one company supplier to choose from most of the time, whereas government tends to create more of a monopoly when uh if you know under socialism and communism uh you're not usually as free to make these choices so um yeah so, so it's, we're, it's the fear uh, of communism you, you have to look out for the red corruption. scare it's the red scare this is what's you going on with you inside of you you're everywhere. an adult man with the internet and you're still stuck uh with the red scare from the 1950s <laughs> Well, um, yeah, I mean, communism, tyranny, corruption, they all happen automatically if people are not vigilant. So. Yes. All right. All um, I think we've gone far enough with this conversation. Mm -hmm. And this should be the last conversation that we'll have on the housing crisis, mm -hmm. especially in California, due mm -hmm. to certain industries. Probably well, not due to social workers. Probably I've not got a solution, social workers. 
a solution to the housing crisis right here. Uh, $4,000 for your next home. Um, it's not painted yet. We're doing a fix and flip. And right now it's not yet fixed and flipped. But um, So now you are going to flip? $4, that small home. little item there. Yeah. So this is going to be beautiful. And I will uh, be showing it to you in the next month or two, all fixed up and ready to live in for you 4, will 000. literally sell anything to anybody uh huh? that's someone's sell anything to anybody under the umbrella that it's housing that could be uh someone's home or a, a travel trailer and it's recommended for travel trailer and i, I just mentioned for homeless because in fact, uh, the city of Los Angeles has been allowing people to live mm -hmm. in these things on public streets for the past five or 10 years or longer. And in that, you see a growing market for profit. I see a growing market um, a la the radical left uh, cities, LA, probably San Francisco, Seattle, and Portland all, all allow you to live in trailers now on the street. Yes. And again, you'll sell them a place for that. I will sell it to anyone if they want to use it as a travel trailer that's a vintage trailer or if they want to live in it or mm -hmm. um, but no, let's I mean hopefully they'll just take it on their they'll just take it on their their holidays. Well, it's made for that. So the the homeless thing I mentioned just because that's where we are today. That's where we are today. That's where we are today. Yes, I agree. So yes, I think we've exceeded our goal of eventually cutting these down to 10 minutes. And um, uh, thank you for being part of going to the hot seat where I just ask as many hot questions as I possibly can. All right, thank you. Hot seat with Hank Khan and Corey Chambers. Thank you very much, Corey Chambers. See you all next week. All right.